Hi everyone, it's Carla the Bubble Lush, and this is my 14 week update, and I'll also be talking about my first official midwife appointment. It was very exciting. Um, so, six or 14 weeks. I'm getting ahead of myself, 16 weeks, I wish. Um, so, 14 weeks. The baby, future infant, baby bubble, whatever you want to call him or her, I still don't know the gender, um, is the size of a lemon. Uh, about 3.4 inches long and he finally weighs more than an ounce. He weighs one and a half ounces. I'm just gonna go ahead and refer to him, the baby, as a him because it's easier than saying him slash her. That throws a lot of people off and they think that I secretly know that it's a boy. I have no idea what the gender is, so stop saying that. <laughs> I get it all the time on Facebook. So now the baby is making faces. It's um, its muscles and its reflexes, it can finally control muscle movements. So it's practicing making expressions, it's grinning, it's frowning, uh, which is really neat. <laughs> it's just really neat. You can also grimace. I feel sometimes like it's listening to everything I say and like making fun of me, but that's just me. Uh, <laughs> The baby is also now a peeing machine. The kidneys are producing urine, which is released in the amniotic fluid. So right now, I think I read that like 80% of the amniotic fluid is urine. Awesome. <laughs> um, but and then I think I also read somewhere that he's emptying his kidneys, emptying his bladder um, every 20 minutes, which would make sense. While uh, that during the workday. I am like double fisting glasses of water. I can't drink enough. In fact, I went into work on Tuesday morning. I had my big water bottle. It was empty. I went to fill it at the bubbler before I even went to my desk. And uh, the water machine was gone. <laughs> it was gone. And so I went to the receptionist and I was like, where's the water machine? <laughs> I'm thirsty. And uh, she was like, oh, we sent it in for repairs. It should be back later this week. And I'm kind of emotional and I almost started crying. I'm like a mess. Um, she was like, tap water's fine. And I was like, okay. So, so um, I have like supersonic smelling right now. I can smell everything. And along with that, my taste buds are really heightened. I can taste everything in a dish. So when I took a sip of that tap water, it was disgusting. Uh, luckily, a lot of my co-workers, they go to this convenience store that has like a deli in it and they pick up their lunch there. So I emptied my purse, I found all the change I could, and I gave it to one of my co-workers and I, was, and I was like, please just buy me the biggest bottle of water you can find. He comes back into the lunchroom carrying a gallon of water. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, I asked for it. So that lasted me two days, just during work. So I'm drinking a lot of water. Uh, I try not to drink a lot at night. Uh, I try to have like a glass of milk or something like that with dinner because I'm trying not to pee a million times in the middle of the night. Um, I usually get up about once at 3 when my husband wakes up to go to work. And then again at like 6 when I wake up. So it's not that bad. It's only going to get worse, I know. <laughs> uh, let's see what's going on with the baby. Oh, really quick. The baby now has fingerprints. And I found out why everyone's fingerprints are unique. And I figured I would share. Um, so the baby creates, I'm looking at my fingers, <laughs> so the baby creates his fingerprints um, when he's swimming around in the amniotic fluid <clears throat> and like as he rubs his hands up against the walls of the uterus and everything, um, he creates a unique pattern of ridges. So that's why even identical twins have different fingerprints. I just thought it was really neat that that's kind of how fingerprints are created. The baby's arms are now proportional to its body. Its legs will become proportional later, I'm sure. Um, it's kind of just like the head is the first to form and then the fingers were the first to like get unwebbed and then the feet. Evolution kind of takes place from the head down. Development takes place from the head down. So uh, the baby will use its hands before it uses its legs, so hands are more important to develop right now. So the hands and arms are the first thing to lengthen. Um, oh, also, it's starting to get that really fine covering of <laughs> hair um, all over the baby. The liver has started making bile, uh, so that's a sign that it's doing its job. And the spleen started producing red blood cells, so that's pretty neat. <laughs> 
Uh, as far as me, I still feel great. Um, I'm not that tired. I do go to sleep a little early than usual, and um, some nights I get home and at 7.30 I'm done. But I can make it through the whole work day, and for waking up at, you know, 5, that's pretty good. Um, week 14. This is this week marks the peak production of relaxin, and I can kind of feel it. Um, I just get really achy in my hips and my butt, especially when I'm sitting at my desk all day working on reports. I can really feel it. <clears throat> um, if you don't know, relaxin is what sh what causes the uh, joints and muscles to loosen in the body, so your hips and pelvis can expand for birth. The relaxin is going to stay in your body the whole pregnancy, but it just peaked uh, this week. So I just have to take more breaks and walk around. I hate doing that because it makes me look like I'm not doing my job and just like dinking around and talking to people, but I really need to remember to take a break. So I'm just such a diligent worker. <laughs> um, at 13 and a half weeks, I had my first midwife appointment. Uh, I had in my previous appointment was just an intake appointment with a nurse. This time I was actually meeting with a midwife. She performed uh, like a pap smear a breast examination. She also uh, felt to see if my ovaries were in the right place. She did that vaginally, by the way, and that was a little intrusive, <laughs> but I guess that's the old school way of doing it, and she was an old school type lady. She said that my fundus, which is the top of my uterus, is about two fingertips above my pubic bone, but the fact is that like, when I feel down where my uterus should be. Everything is just so firm. I can barely even feel where my pelvic pubic bone like ends. So I don't know. This is all baby down there. Um let's see. Oh, one of the big questions I had for her, my major concerns, I know I'm at a higher risk for developing gestational diabetes. And I know that some midwives don't care for you and they switch you to the care of an OB if you develop gestational diabetes. So that's one of the questions I asked. We talked about it. She said, if I develop gestational diabetes and it could be controlled with diet, they could totally still take care of me. Not a problem. If I had to switch to uh, taking insulin to control gestational diabetes, then um, what it would do was one appointment would be with an OB and then the next appointment would be with a midwife and I just go back and forth like that. And they call it co-care. It's fine with me. So uh, the only situations where I couldn't be cared for with a midwife is if I had some weird uh, clotting disorder, which I don't, if I had twins, um, and if I had some other scary situations, which I don't. So that really made me confident that at, in the worst case, it'll be co-care between the midwife, uh, midwifery practice and an OB. So that was really great. She said the pap looked great. Um, I had already had blood work done at the uh, NT scan, but she didn't go over any of those results with me. One of the big things we're thinking of right now is our midwifery practice offers a group prenatal program. What you do is you meet with eight to ten women that are due about the same time you are. You meet for an hour, you discuss a topic for the day, you do a Q&A session, and then one by one each of you goes to like a private area and you listen to the heartbeat and, and ask any private questions. Um, obviously there's a lot of benefits of that, of you know learning from each other. There's some cons of uh, just a general lack of privacy. Another nice thing would be that you get to meet people in the area that are due about the same time as you, that are going through the same thing as you, and you can really have one-on-one -on -one conversations. Uh, but the major downside, and the reason why we might not do it, is that the program, my group, meets Thursday from 1.30 to 3.30, which is right in the middle of my work day. I'd end up having to take the whole afternoon of Thursday off, and yes, it's only once a month, but then it becomes twice a month, and then it becomes every week. And that's a lot of sick time that I don't really want to be taking now. I'd rather be taking it and getting paid for it while I'm on maternity leave. So as much as we'd like to participate, we're probably just going to stick with individual appointments. So we're kind of bummed about that. Hi, guys. So I figured that since I get people asking me all the time for a belly shot, um, I would do a really quick one. So this is 14 and a half weeks. So this is from the front. I just look fluffy. <laughs> and this is from the side. Not that big, 
but it's uh, getting hard to hide. Bye guys.